everything from a, a, a childlike vision of perfection, a, a fairy tale version of what a relationship should be. You've done it for a long time. You did it with Laura. He kept thinking she was a perfect daughter, and every sign pointed to just the opposite. Yeah, I suppose that's probably true. What does that have to do with us? Leslie, our relationship has problems, too. We have to look at them realistically. We can't go back and think about what they were or compare them to some uh, storybook or movie version of what a marriage should be. Now, we're making the steps that we have to. Now, they may not be going as fast as we'd like them to, but the important thing is that we're making them. Well, that's my uh, speech for the morning. Tremendous dinner. I'm glad you did, Scotty. It was nice to have you here. But tell me, couldn't you sense something wrong between Leslie and Rick, too? No, no, not really, Laura. When you and I came in from the dining room, they still looked very much in love to me. Yes, but that was unusual. It doesn't happen very often these days. They both used to be so relaxed and demonstrative around the house, and lately they hardly ever touch or kiss like they did last night. Well, maybe maybe it's a good sign. Maybe it means that things are improving. Laura, I always thought of, of your parents as like a perfect couple. And I'd like to have their kind of marriage myself someday. Laura, what's the matter? You're not saying anything. Nothing. I was surprised, that's all. By what? Oh, uh, well, I think that's the first time I've heard you talk about being married, that's all. <laughs> well, I may not talk about it much, but I think everybody assumes that they're going to be married someday, and I, I guess they hope that it's going to be a happy one, one that'll last them for a whole lifetime. I've never seen anything that lasting. Well, Laura, you haven't lived a lifetime yet. Now, come on, give yourself a chance. Is that a friendly way of telling me I'm still a child? No, no, I'm saying that you're still young. Listen, Laura, I had a really great idea, and I want to check it out with your parents first and make sure it's okay. What's that? Well, Brian was telling me last night that he and some friends drove up the lake, and they had dinner at the lodge, and he said it was really a great place, and it was a nice drive. So I, I was thinking, Laura, that, that maybe you could use a change of scenery. Would you like to do that? I can't leave the county, Scotty. You know that. Not for five more long months. No, no, no. It's okay because it's still in the county limits. It's just like an hour away from Fort Charles. Oh, I'd love it if we could. All right. Well, listen, let me check it out with you and your mother Rick at the hospital, and uh, I'll see if it can be arranged. For when? Oh, I don't know, in a day or two, when we both can get some time away from the hospital, when I don't have a late class. You know, we're going to have to have an awfully early dinner to make it back before my 9 o'clock curfew. Oh, sure, sure. We'll leave really early, you know, like around 3.30 or 4. Laura, we'll be together, you know, and we'll have a nice dinner and we'll look over the lake. And I'll have you back in plenty of time. What do you say? I think it sounds like a wonderful idea. And if you could get Leslie and Rick to go along with it, I would love to. 
Good, good. All right, I'll make arrangements with Lee to borrow his car so that there can be no mechanical goof-ups along the way. It sounds like a lot of fun, Scotty. And it was really nice of you to think of it. Well, Laura, I, I hope that you know by now that all I want to do is I want to make you happy. Well, mainly, I just wanted to thank you for listening to all my problems last night, Luke, and, and for being so understanding. It really helped have somebody to talk to about it. No, I haven't changed what's on my mind. Find out everything you can about Cal Jameson. Good. Huh? Oh, you mean my plan to get even with Laura Weber? Sure, I thought about that a lot. Yeah, well, I think the one thing that would really get her in trouble is, would be to have her caught out after curfew, and I've got an even better plan. Because, because I'm waiting for the right moment. Don't worry, when the time's right, I'll call you and give you the go-ahead. I want her caught in the act and sent away where she won't be able to bother me anymore. <laughs> Jesse and I were talking about it after you left. We were afraid that maybe it was that note from the man at the bar. No, no, it didn't have anything at all to do with that. You sure? He seemed upset when he got back at the table. He didn't uh, try to get fresh with you or anything like that, did he? No, who would have given you an idea like that? Well, that's not so far-fetched. You're a very attractive young woman. And there are always men around looking for attractive young women to uh, force their attentions on. Thanks for the compliment, Dan, but you couldn't be more wrong. Well, in this case, I'm glad I am. He was just uh, some guy who thought he'd met me somewhere before, but I set him straight in a hurry. All right. But listen, if anything like that ever happens to you, don't feel you can handle it. Just yell for help, will you? You know, through Jesse, I think you and I have become very close friends. And I just want you to know that I'm there to help, and I want you to remember that. Thank you, Dan. I feel really close to you, too. You're a sweetheart. Hey, you've just made my day. Now I'll get down and see if I can do the same for Jesse. Bye-bye. Hey, Jesse, what are you doing? Hi. Uh, I've just made breakfast, and your tea is ready any time you are. Thank you. Rick, could you wait just a minute? There's, yes, I just, there's something that I wanted to say to you. I've been thinking about what you said upstairs, and I think you may be right. I think I may have had a tendency to look at things from a storybook point of view. But I also remember a time in its early days when our marriage did seem to fit that description perfectly. Honey, I, I didn't say this to upset you. No, I'm, I'm not. You didn't upset me. You gave me a lot to think about. Leslie, the, the very fact that Laura was involved with David all that time and we never knew it, and that you lied all those months to protect her. That just proves that our marriage was anything but perfect. Hey, it doesn't say anything about my love for him. But honey, we have a responsibility to each other, to Laura, and to the court who released her into our custody. Do you understand? Yes, Rick, of course I understand. Honey, it's an awesome responsibility, but at the same time, we have a chance to rebuild our marriage into something far better than it ever was. I'm really that sure that we can. I'm so afraid sometimes that everything that's happened has just chipped away at the foundation of it. Not if we don't let them, Leslie. We can't afford that. Look, if we fail, Judge Stallman can come in here and take Laura away from us and send her to a reform school. And he can do that anytime he wants in these next five months. Believe me, I'm aware of that as you are. Well, if we fail each other, we fail Laura. And that's not going to happen, is it? And I can do that for you. I can do it for myself, too. You have to wait on me. You're right. You're family. You can do yourself. Right. <laughs> you want anything in that? No, no, black's fine. You know, your Aunt Rose was full of questions this morning on the way to the bus station about uh, why Gary wasn't here and what his book was about. Do you know, I had to tell her, I didn't have the slightest idea what his book was. Is it a novel or what? No. 
style book with a sophisticated twist. That's all I know about it, too. But being Gary, I'm sure that's a lot of humor in it. You think he's qualified to have a book like that? Oh, come on. Well, I'm just asking. Oh. <laughs> anyway, do you think a book like that has a chance of being a big success? I don't have any idea. I know books like that don't usually become bestsellers, but I hope it gets published and sells for Gary's sake. Well, there's so many diet books on the market right now that I'm doubtful about its chances. That doesn't sound this loyal, does it? No. Not a bit. It sounds realistic to me. Anyway, I'll keep my fingers crossed. Yeah. I just hope it gets published. I'd be terribly disappointed if it didn't get that far, at least. Yeah. I think it would be nice to see a book with your name on it sitting on a shelf. Yes. As long as it didn't sit there too long. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, listen, I want to thank you for a really good dinner yesterday. Dory and I really enjoyed ourselves. I'm glad. You're a big help being there, both of you. And Aunt Rose, too. <laughs> and I want to thank you for getting up so early this morning and driving her to the bus. Oh, I don't mind at all. You know, your Aunt Rose is still afraid of flying machines, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> is she ever? She says the one ride she had was a very exciting, but it's a much safer on the ground. <laughs> Can I give you a ride to the hospital this morning? I'm going to go by and have breakfast with Dory. Well, if you don't mind. Well, if I minded, I wouldn't have offered. Okay, you're on. I'll just get dressed. It'll only take me a second. Okay. Take your time and no hurry. Yeah, read the paper. Howard. Hmm? Can I ask you a quest personal question? Well, I guess you know me well enough for that. What is it? If it's none of my business, you tell me. Okay. I was just wondering, are you and Dory serious? About one another. It would be nice if you are, because I'm fond of both of you. Are you? Well, I, uh, I can tell you that I really enjoy being with Dory. And she's nice, and she's easy to be with. I guess if you count that as serious, you can say we are. I'm not sure that's what I meant. I was asking, but uh, I'll settle for that. I'll be here for a second. Okay. Howard, would you get that for me, please? Yes. Hello. Who's this? Gary, is that you? Howard? Yeah. What are you doing there? Well, I just stopped by for an early visit. How are you? Well, I'm fine. I was surprised to hear a man answer. I don't blame you. I'm glad you didn't hang up. I drove uh, Gina's Aunt Rose to the bus depot this morning, and then I stopped by for a cup of coffee. Tina's inside getting dressed, and when she's ready, I'm going to take her into the hospital. Oh, I see. You know, how are things going there? Going fine. Good, good. We all missed you yesterday. We talked a lot about you. Well, it's good to hear. Everybody have a good dinner? Great. Hey, you really missed a spread. Now, hang on. I'll call Gina. Okay. Gina? It's Gary. Yeah. 